Uh, the summer of 1941, uh, I found myself uh, uh, needing one one credit, so I went I went to the draft board and I said, "Can I get a deferment for about a month and a half, something like that, to finish the course that I had to take during the summer?" And then uh, I was drafted uh, and uh, uh, and was sent to uh, uh, a place called Camp Lee outside of Petersburg, Virginia, which was brand new at the time. And uh, uh, I found myself being in the medics. Why? I couldn't tell you. And you, you know, you learn a lot about what you're supposed to be doing in the field uh, and, uh, and how to treat uh, uh, wounded uh, people. And uh, I thought, well, so I'm in the medics. And uh, after about two or three weeks there, I, I got a message that uh, I had to come back uh, and get a pass to get back to Cincinnati, Ohio, because they had a district uh, uh, court there, a uh, federal district court there, and uh, that uh, I was to get my citizenship papers. Uh, and uh, uh, I was interviewed uh, by a couple of the newspapers there because I was in uniform and they had never seen anybody in an American uniform that was sworn in to become a United States citizen. First of all, we came upon there by accident, really. Uh, all of a sudden we see this railroad yards, and as, as one of the pictures, they're not very good. I, I got out of the truck and uh, said, I want to get on, on to climb on that flat car, these little flat cars and see, uh, reaching up like this to see how high these fins really are. And uh, several other guys did the same thing. And then uh, get back in the trucks and lo and behold, here two minutes later, you come upon this tunnel. That tunnel was all lit up. I mean, it looked like a factory that had been emptied out completely. And, and then you walk a little further and lo and behold, you see all these people lying there on the ground. and we, started taking pictures. So, in, in a way, uh, cruel as it may sound, it just, uh, you know, you almost, it wasn't a matter of having a bunch of people come at you and saying, oh, you know, I'm, none of that happened. Mm -hmm. Because the few people that were alive were virtually dead. And you had people that were dead on the ground and living, barely living, uh, and that's what you were concerned about. Along with it, you were constantly feeling, I'm going to throw up because it's just overwhelming uh, stench. And at the same time, it was so quiet. It was just dead, this dead silence. It was like, like a cloud was overhanging everything. You know, it was just eerie, a very eerie feeling of uh, uh, no sounds or anything like that. It was highly unusual in that respect. That I remember, but uh, uh, and, uh, <clears throat> and then it was a matter of also some of our medical officers apparently did get involved in sorting out uh, and seeing whether somebody was still alive and keeping him uh, gone and having the townspeople take the, the dead skeletons, for two. that's what they were. People were just skeletal remains of people that were put in these trenches.